I, I suppose we all have very similar cases and uh, unfortunately in growing numbers. Can I just ask, what's the uh, cost per bed for a HSE provided bed in a special facility over a private bed? Uh, uh, and yeah, so so I don't have a figure for those two um, uh, comparisons because I actually because the, co the complexity it's not private versus well, non-private well, well, because according actually according to the it, breakdown it, I have I can just give it to you. So we have a facility, a five bed facility in Enniscorthy. I won't yeah. name it. It's ninety thousand. It's not mm. clearly not sufficient. Okay, that's what the breakdown is of the money they receive. But in a corresponding HSE facility, it's three hundred thousand. Doesn't that seem well, without knowing the detail of the complexity of the individuals, I, I actually wouldn't say that I could make a fair uh, comment yeah. on the comparison. So the diff So what you're saying is you don't actually have a per bed. It's all individual needs, is it? The pricing. Like, well, do you so not have a structure of how you pay? For instance, do you pay when you're paying out to 39s? Do you take into account um, inflation? So, so I think going back to the point that the CEO made earlier, so inflation and the Section 39s is a, is a, is a part of the wider sort of parity. But just... just uh, um, is that a yes more, or no? Sorry. Well, inflation, it, we're, we're not funded for the inflationary costs in Section 39 organisations. So it, it makes up part of the, the gap in our funding. However, just to be clear, when, when we're engaging an organisation, a Section 39 or our own service, and we look at what the service is to be provided. There's Thanks, a service Ms. arrangement I, I tell under. You, I have 20 pages of There's a service arrangement. That don't listen. Well, the if service it, arrangement, it which is the determinant of the funding relationship argument. between no. the provider and the HSE. Thanks very much. Thanks. Um, from that perspective, we don't seem to. You, you said earlier on that you weren't able to predict um, how many people are, would leave. How many people? How many doctors retire every year? Our turnover rate for our all staff categories is in the region of six to seven percent. Of all categories, of all that's categories. speech I do. and language physiotherapists. Yeah, or? so that's the okay. turnover rate. Well, uh, we, I would have so that by staff category. Six, with what me. does that equate to in a figure? Six to seven percent. Sorry, now, Chairman, we might just take an extra minute here. Might need a calculator. Um, so, if in medical and dental. Uh, the number of staff employed at December was uh, 12,500, so which would be a multiplier of that. So it depends on the staff categories. Is that just in disabilities? No, no, sorry, that's uh, overall within the HSE. Or you mean in disability just? Yeah. Our disability staffing as at December was 20,000. That's for all disability services. Okay, so how many retired? Six, seven percent. Six to seven percent would okay. be the, the turnover rate. That's not on? all retirement. How many were now. taken on? So Percentage wise then? Okay, so um, two things I would say to that. One is that there's the replacement rate. Okay. And the replacement well, rate has been met, and in addition to that, over the last don't have this three years, don't there have has been 1,600 additional just, net Well, net for the record, Chair, this is just Wexford, and this, these are non-filled positions that are required. We have 20.4 physiotherapies in the primary care sector. They're available vacancies. We have not filled them. We have 10.1 whole time equivalence occupational therapy. We have 19.9 .9 whole time equivalence speech and language, all primary care, and then four and a half whole time equivalence in psychology. Mental health, we have one whole time equivalent occupational therapist, disability services, two whole time equivalents in the CDNT for physiotherapy, three whole time equivalents occupational therapist CDNT, four whole time equivalents speech and language therapist CDNT, four whole time equivalent CDNT for psychology services. And I can go on. I'm putting it on the record because you, Miss O'Neill, said that we had improved. We have no speech and language therapist in New Ross. Actually, actually we had two, and that now your area we have was none. particularly challenged. Well, but there is you know, a net increase the nationally. The thing about it is, all and areas. All of those posts would have gone to probably multiple recruitment campaigns. The reality is, we look, it was yourself, Mr. O'Grady, who said we were a shower of loopers, wasn't it? Wasn't that your statement? Deputy, just... 
But it was, keep, wasn't keep it? To the well, it's a question he can answer because he hasn't answered keep any questions so far. Keep to the questions. Was that you, end, Mr. O'Grady? Keep to the questions. Like the, the, subject. Subject. Yeah. the subject is, Chair, hmm. you would be a looper if you were sitting here getting no answers from and having people in the most dire need coming to you day in, day out, being choked by their children, being physically attacked by their children, and we can't offer a service because you don't have a solution to your recruitment and retention crisis, and we're hearing it day in, day out. Money is not the issue, 23 billion. And you, Mr O'Grady, are responsible for giving it to him, and we're the loopers. I think you might qualify which yeah, lo who just, were the loopers. In the team just here. Treat, uh, treat yeah. witness, with respect, could you just, just say, just in relation to recruitment, because this has come up at every, nearly at every um, opportunity or every occasion that we've had you in. Just in relation to that, and you have cited Wexford, and you could rattle it off in relation to other counties that there, there's a clear, clearly a problem with filling posts in those uh, in those child disability network teams, uh, you know, to uh, provide that service. And we have to. We, there are statistics there in terms of the vacancies across them. And what I ask you to do, so as we're clear about it, is to come back with the plan and the schedule for improvements in rec recruitment and filling those positions. We know, they can't be, we, we know that you can't click your fingers and, and fill them, but what the plan is, you know, this year, next year and the year after, over the next three to four years, what's the plan for filling those? What's the actions being taken? Because it means colleges, it means having people in colleges doing the right courses, it means people coming out the other end you know the funding that's gone in, that we uh, that we ensure that that is being used properly. But if you come back to us with that, uh, Miss Hoy, that would be helpful because it's extremely frustrating. The deputy here has, uh, deputies have rattled off cases. But in well, areas chair, if I could just and, say, and it's we, a we've huge actually a whole time equivalent dietitian that isn't even listed. We and, didn't and, even. And right they seem to be not yeah, listed. And right across the board, right across 26 counties, those that's that's replicated, uh, and we need to know where this is going. Uh, you know where, how these are going to be. What's the plan for filling them? What's the plan to improve retention as well, and recruitment and training right well, across those there was areas? Three hundred and fifty million given to the HSE. Yeah. Did, were, you, were you signing off on that, Mr. O'Grady? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just want to let in. Three hundred and fifty million for a waiting list yeah. action plan. Yeah. We have to ask the question: the where CEO, that three hundred and fifty million went? The CEO for the last five minutes. Sorry, he wants to just come in. Just to answer that question. So, definitely, we dealt with the hospital, uh, the, the improvements in, in the hospital wait list to start. We can go over that again if you wish. But just, just to say, to use the disability fig figures that Amory uh, indicated over the period, if I understood it correct, roughly 1,400 is the number of those 20,000 that we would have lost over that period. And to get to a net additional 1,600, I think you said, Amory, that means we had to recruit over that period 3,000. So, 3,000 staff were recruited. We lost 1,400. The net increase is 1,600. That's substantial. Now, just to put that in context of the entire health service, ourselves and all the Section 38s. We've grown the service with, with government investment by about 18,000 since January 2020. 18,000. We've lost nine or 10,000 a year. That means we've had to recruit about 48,000 staff over the last three years in order to have a net increase in 18,000. There has never been an organisation that has recruited, has increased its recruitment capacity as much as we have. Have we a lot more to do? We absolutely do. We understand. Many that. cases have if been I could finish, Deputy, WRC, We Mr. understand Mr. the impact of the lack of staff on staff on patients and families and children. How many cases services. are in the WRC for HSE staff? How many cases do you have in the WRC currently? I'm not sure the relevance of the question, Deputy. I, but I'm I don't not have the answer with me. To never mind the relevance. I'm asking for how many staff have you in the WRC? How many cases has the HSE Out of our something like 150,000 staff, Deputy, I don't know right now, but we can certainly okay. get you the figure. We, we get the figure, okay. Supply that figure, please. Uh, thank you for that. And, and if, uh, if so Mr O'Grady would like a chance, yeah. it, as in yeah. it's a question but, he but can answer, he may with, like to address it to be fair, to he seems to want to. I am treating yeah. him with respect, he seems to want to answer. If Mr Deputy, if Mr O'Grady wants to, wants, to, wants to reply to you, I'll allow him to do that. But I want, yeah, no, I want people to be treated with respect. Can you just, I am so absolutely what you're saying is there's, there's net gain into our services of 1,400. 1,600. 1,600, yeah. 3, okay. Recruited to get a net gain of 1,600. Back, you haven't got it, but you can go back to us with that. Just if you wish to respond very briefly. Okay, I don't sure. want to develop into it. No, no. If I, Mr O'Grady would so, like to. Yes, we just allow. I would just like this. to put on the record that I have the utmost respect for the committee and its members and the work that it, so, that it does. We seek it at all times to engage as constructively and as helpfully as we can. 
I understand that you know, today on other occasions there may be frustrations around the level of information we can bring, but we are absolutely committed to supporting the work of the committee. There was an apology written through the Secretary General on my behalf, and I'm happy to apologise here to the committee as well. Okay, that's accepted. Thanks for that. Okay. So